Hey people, what's going on? It's Friday and um, still feeling pretty good. see this I like um, a comment you made uh, about my tunes on Facebook a while back you said something to the effect that if someone um, discovered this from the 70s or whatever you know some critic word or someone were to find this lost gem of my music they'd be freaking out and be thinking they'd found the next mana from heaven and you know it's the damn truth I'm here I am still alive telling you direct the man that makes the music and that's too much for most people I get it's it's got to be that weird shit you know who we discovered this you know <laughs> I'm still here man I'm making this badass music you know <laughs> sharing it with you probably gonna put a couple of these tracks like this one up on my SoundCloud today you can't download the music there I'm uh, Something's with my Bandcamp site. Um, haven't been able to upload music. Probably need to upgrade my job or something. But anyway, I'd like to um, put some of these tunes out for folks to listen to before I make a record. Um, they, but they won't be downloadable. But you'll be able to listen to this stuff. We, of course, you can download if you know how to. Anything on the internet can be downloaded. You all know that, or some of you know that. So you can have some of this music, you know, because I'm jamming to it. You know, since I got the Reason software, I have been focusing on ambient music and music with uh, a natural body beat. I haven't done too many things rock oriented because I haven't wanted to. I will if and when I want to. When I was making music before I had um, before I had this software upgrade and I really wasn't focusing on trying to get an upgrade I wasn't happy with the beats that I could make with the drum machine that I have this old Y Yamaha RY20 um, got this back in 94 in Japan when I was working for a company there they bought this for me um, at the time I was happy with it, but shortly after I got it, I was not happy with it because of the limit of the drum sounds and not knowing how to reprogram these drum sounds. So, Brendan James, I don't know if Brendan, if you're still around watching from Australia, but Brendan last year for my birthday sent me a 16 gig of uh, drum and ambient loops and I've, it's um, been a, such a wonderful gift and I use those uh, sounds all the time. Thank you, Brendan, if you happen to see this. But uh, yeah, I'm digging my music, folks. Dig it with me, you know? I can't afford to buy no records, so I'm making good music.
I need for my life. And I do hear my neighbor is my cousin Ray is just off the chain this year. He plays that same and he's playing a lot of hollering blues right now. I swear the man is losing his mind. Just every day loud and he honks his horn when he leaves for no I don't know who he's honking at, you know? So I hear plenty of blues, so I know what the hell I'm talking about. I need this music as an antidote to that fucking poison. I had a really good conversation with a um, jazz musician that is uh, was in town. He's leaving today. Rick Brown from uh, California. Trombone player. If any of you have ever heard of the band Malo, Jorge Santana's band, Malo, they had one hit, Suavecito. Uh, my man Rick Brown on trombone was in that band. He's not on the hit, but he was in Malo for a while, but anyway, we were um, doing a recording session here, and then he came back the next day just to hang and talk, and we talked deep, and you know, he's a jazz musician, so he is like everyone else, he's got the blues deep, but he listened to me, you know, and my lament, and my point of view about how I think anymore the music of the blues sounds like this, is the sound of death to me, and it sounds like a trap, and it sounds like people are trapped in the illusion of the blues, he listened to me, you know, I appreciated that, you know, because when I bring it up, most people tell me I am absolutely full of shit, and that's fine, but I'm onto something that works for me. I think some of y'all could benefit from it. That's why I say it. Not to be, not to be uh, a know-it-all that might be in there some, somewhat, but it's because what I'm saying really works for me. You know, I find myself feeling younger, not older. So, um... I took a bunch, not a bunch, but a small stack of records down to almost, not almost, but the other record store, Hip Stop, Jesse Cundiff's store, to, to do some trading, and he really didn't have much that I wanted. Um, I got some 45s, though, and uh, I just want to support Jesse's store, and every now and then I just want to get some records. So what I, what I got for my trade was a 12-inch of Sign of the Times by Prince. It covers damage, but big deal. It's a German pressing. Yeah, I do like Prince. I love Prince, actually. You know, I don't listen to him much, but I do still, like, when I can get things like this cheaply, I still have a Prince collection in the closet. So I'll get them. I got some singles for, like, a, a, a dollar or less. So I got, yes, Owner of a Lonely Heart for the B-side, our song, and also for my yes collection, you know. I do like... Yes, a lot. Got it. Okay, sip it down. Got this Earth and Wind and Fire single from when they were still on Warner Brothers. Love is Life. Backed with This World Today. This one I got because um, when I was a kid, these were always intriguing. Records on the Liberty label, promos, a lot of pop, but some psych. So this is pop. The Deep Six, The Things We Say, but I was happy to get that. Jesse was real kind to me to let me have these, because these are collectible, and he could have kept them and asked for more money. Records on the Twinite label, Twin Night or Twinite, and this is by The Notations, A New Day, old school, get a grind on type of soul records, you know, these are the records I grew up with as a kid, listening to at parties, dancing with the girls. I got another one, Sill Johnson, we do it together. And thank you, baby, on tw Twinite. A collectible soul label for sure. So, Jesse, thank you so much. I know these are collectible and can go for money. I also got a couple of Prince singles for uh, my Prince box. Um, Kiss. And you got the look. Like, like everybody else that I see, I've seen Prince three, four times. I did attempt to, like a fool, I, try, I attempted to meet him. I took some records. Um, I got as far as getting the records to the, uh, the um, security. And the cocksucker could, didn't even wait until he was out of sight. He takes the records, saying I'll get them to him. As he walks away, he crushes them in his hands. This is for that motherfucker. Um, I love the Beatles. I can't afford to collect the Beatles like the Beatles collectors. I, I would if I could, but I have a Beatles box. So 
So I got a couple of cheaper Beatles singles because he, you know, Beatles is always commanding money. But I got Hello Goodbye backed with I Am the Walrus on, that. and this is in good shape. A lot of my Beatles singles are are are, are trash, but this is a nice one. Nice. Thanks again, Jesse. You honor me. So I got Hello Goodbye. I got the ballad of this is not the Beatles, but it's John and Lo John and Yoko. Power to the people. I'm still tripping over the fact that I met Sean Ono Lennon. To be honest, it still means a lot to me. It does. I don't lie about that at all. I also picked up um, Sergeant Pepper's with a uh, little help from my friends on the B-side is A Day in the Life. Pick that up. And this is warped to shit, but I, I, I don't want to play it. I just wanted to have a copy of it. Ain't She Sweet by The Beatles. It's a terrible version. I just remember when I was a kid getting into The Beatles, seeing all these Beatles records and all those different labels. And even then as a kid, it was confusing. It was like, what's going on here, you know? Because you know you, you you get used to seeing artists on one label, you know. So I got those, and that was that was fun. Sitting out is Cluster. I played this a friend that I haven't seen for a while. He used to play guitar in my band. Thomas Brunicki came by last night with some tunes, and I was pleasantly um, surprised because what he brought me sounded like Cluster. And he had never heard Cluster in his life. So when I played this after we listened to his um, ambient stuff that he's been working on, um, it was mind blowing because he said, this does sound like me. And he had never heard it, which is, I think, fantastic. You know, coming up with music like that completely on your own, you know, just because you feel inspired by it. I recommend it to my friend Thomas to get on SoundCloud and start um, uploading and sharing that music because people like, some of you people will enjoy this. It's it's fantastic music it really is and then online I was talking to Eric Stegels and they were talking about uh, LA Carnival a band from Omaha that was led by Lester Abrams who has also done writing and production for people like the Doobie Brothers they made one single as LA Carnival called Blind Man Color it's very collectible very rare and I have a copy this is probably one of the rarest records that I own that I know of again I don't know I still think I have things in my collection that I don't know. I don't know that it's, you know, that it's collectible yet. I've shown the majority of my records in my videos, but I haven't shown everything. And there are records that, just for some reason, when I see them, uh, it doesn't strike me to show them. But I'm thinking I have something um, collectible besides that, but that LA Carnival. I'll speak of it, um, Brian, if you happen to see this video, after I listen to this, I'll get back to you, but Brian Day, who runs the Public Eyesore label, just sent me another new release of his by Ben Bennett and Jack Wright, Tangle. I just got this in the mail yesterday. So I haven't played it yet, so I, I can't give a re review yet, but I will show it. I love that you sent me the music. I haven't reviewed everything you've sent me, Brian. Um, I, w I will eventually, but I, I will call attention again to people who are of an adventurous spirit to investigate Public Eyesore records. They're online, Public Eyesore, you'll find them. I also turned my friend um, Tom on to Sid Arthur. I also see where someone, I think in New York, who I don't know, who found out about Sid Arthur through me, tweeted that. I, it, and I retweeted it today, that he went and saw Sid Arthur because of what I've been saying and was knocked out. Okay, so um, here's another one where I'm just, I'm getting these beats together. I'm loving, I'm loving the beat for the body. The beat is for the body. So. So hope everybody is well. I really appreciate all of your friendship and your comments and love. You know, I really think 
think it sucks that people have to have vocals to listen to music. Because I got these tunes and they're great, but I can't get a lot of people to listen because ain't nobody singing. I don't give a shit about that. This, this music, this is your soundtrack, okay? Half the time, the vocals just get in the way and they start telling you what to think. Let the music just be a... Just let that music happen. Last thing I'll say before I go is I really appreciate hearing from the other black people. You guys know what I'm talking about and you understand why I keep bringing up stuff about black and about minorities and about white privilege because there's a large contingent of the pol political world that wants to pretend that race is not an issue but it is big time and because I have to deal with it in ways that I don't ask for continually I will continually be bringing it up and putting it in your face because everything is not better and this world is a double standard for people of color and people who are white, and even with people with money, your money is all that they want. You still don't have that, that ticket, that white ticket. And this is not hate. Okay, you people that don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just telling the motherfucking truth of this planet. It's an unfair game board. And one of the factors is race. And it's not me fomenting hate, it's me trying to wake motherfuckers up to this fact so we can fix people's attitudes, okay? I'm not trying to foment hate, that's for stupid people. Are you just stupid or can you get with me and take it up to the next level? Because that's what I'm about and that's what this music is about. This music is trying to take it up. Blues ain't taking shit up. Blues keeps us stuck in the fucking mud, yeah. Wake up, people. Wake up. I, I got something for that ass.